Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Thank you for stopping by. Guys, I just want to get started in this message. I was listening to something this morning. I was listening to another teaching and um, they brought up the, the scripture of the prodigal son. And as I was listening, the Lord just laid it in my spirit to talk about something here. And so guys, I want to get right into it. So Father, I just thank you for this day. I thank you for my brothers and sisters in the Lord. I pray God that the things that I speak today will not be of me, but only you. I pray also God that it will bring us Father, peace, Lord God, and it will give us further understanding and wisdom in our position with you in the name of Jesus. I pray, oh God, that we will not be tempted to, to plant roots in the place of discouragement because we're tired to go. We will not plant roots in the place where we may feel depressed or plant roots simply where we're comfortable because we don't want to move any further. I pray, oh God, that we will put our whole trust in you. We will trust in you with all our heart. We're not going to lean on our own understanding. We're not going to lean on our feelings. And so God, I just thank you for revelation and deliverance and comfort and peace, oh God, and perseverance that will be, that will be just deeply, Father, just, just placed within us to keep going. In Jesus name. Amen. So guys, I'm going to read Luke chapter 15. This is the parable of the prodigal son. You probably heard it before and now you're going to hear it again. And um, I'm going to start at verse 11. So Luke 15 and 11. And he said, he, Jesus, he said, a certain man had two sons and the younger of them said to his father, father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a faraway country, and there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. And he would fain have filled his belly, that means he would have gladly filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself, he says, he said, how many hired servants of my father's have bread enough to spare and I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father and will say unto him, father, I have sinned against thee and before thee and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a far off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against thee and in thy sight and in thy sight, I am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, bring forth the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet and bring hither the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and be merry for my son. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to be merry. So I'm going to stop there. And what I want to talk about, guys, is this. When you're a child of God, all of us belong to God. Really, man created. We're all, we all belong to the Lord. But there are people that choose to live for, for the devil. They don't believe that they're living for the devil. They just believe they, believe they just live for themselves. And then there are others that either way, those that are knownly serving saying and those who just think they're, they're living for themselves, they all belong to the power of darkness. And so they operate that way. They function that way. Their mind, their thinking is that way. They follow the ways of the world, the reactions of the world. And so you will find that at some point, we who were also in darkness, we were called out of darkness into his light. And we came unto God and we gave our life to Jesus and we started to do the things that he told us to do. But sometimes what happens is we get curious or we think this way of being is just too mundane. It's too boring. It's too hard. And so you find yourself wanting to just go. So this young man asks his father for his portion of goods. And so you'll find a lot of times we go out into the world and we're using all the gifts and the talents and the abilities and even the blessings and 
the the, the the material goods that you may have as well as the spiritual gifts that the Lord has given you. Let's say it's song, you're a musician, just you just have a knowledge of business, just all these things. And so you take those goods, you take your gifts as well as the things that you have acquired in this world, which all comes from God, and you decide you want to go out into the world. You're tired of singing in the church. You want to go out into the world. You want to sing you know, with a group, you want to travel, you want to do different things, you do, you, and whatever your gift may be, you're using it in the world. Any gift any human being has, no matter what they're doing and whether they're building skyscrapers and they're building houses and they're building land or they're building vehicles, these are all goods and gifts that comes from God. So as children of God, when we're called out of darkness and we go to the Father, at some point we may say, you know what, I want to go and, and, I want to I want to try something else. And so we separate ourselves from the Lord. You see, it wasn't immediately that he left. A few days later, he left. So it, after he got his portion, he didn't leave immediately. He left a little while after. And so that's the thing with us. Maybe God begins to bless us and he our gifts and our abilities and our talents and, and all those things. He gives those things to you. He's blessing you. You're doing well and you stay with him for a while. And then you take your goods, all the blessings and all the things that God has given you and say, you know what, let me go over here and try this. And you go back to the world. Whatever it may be, you may not have a lot of things, but at some point you yourself go away from God. And you go and you try your own thing in the world. You can fill that with whatever it is that you may have left the Lord to do. And some of you, you're currently doing that. Well, let me explain what begins to happen when, when you get out there and you're living your life and you're doing whatever, things are always going to be great for a while. The world and the, and sin and just living how you feel like living always feels good. But eventually there's going to be, there's going to come a time where a famine comes and the famine may not necessarily mean there's no food as what happened in this situation, but a famine in your relationships, a famine in your connection, a famine is something that is no longer there. You don't have anything. Nothing is growing. Nothing is thriving. There's nothing there for you to live on. You don't have the necessities. And that can happen spiritually. A famine in that relationship you are all booed up with, right? You thought this was the one. He was the one. She was the one. A famine can come in the people you are hanging around with. A famine can come in this business venture that you thought it was going to be. So these things happen and you will find that everybody that everyone was all with you until now you're in a place where you don't really have. You don't have anything to give to the group. You don't have any money to help to, to buy some weed. <laughs> you don't have the money anymore to do any major thing. You you no longer have the things available. Your bank account, you've gone bankrupt. So now you no longer have the financial backing that you had to build homes and houses. You've lost your shares in a company. All these things can suddenly happen. What happens? You The famine comes. You suddenly get sick. And so you're not able to do the things that you used to do anymore. The famine comes when you trusted someone to, to come in and collaborate with you in your company and everything. And then you find out this person does something that jeopardizes and you lose everything. So what begins to happen, guys, on whatever level in your life? Whether it's business level, partnerships, corporate levels, family levels, emotional level, or just you by yourself, a famine comes. And what you're going to find is going to happen is when you're in a famine, when you're in this place that you are, you've created a distance and a gap because see the sun went into a faraway country. When you separate from God and go to do your own thing and things, the famine comes, the changes comes. You're going to find that you're going to get desperate. You're willing to eat anything. If you look back on your life, and I can look back at some situations that I was in before, that you can wonder and say, how did I allow myself to even 
to even put up with the situation or how did I think to even do that or to say that? Because you are in a far away country. You are far away from God. And when you leave the Lord and you decide to go into the arena of darkness, which is what it is, when you decide that you want to you want to commit yourself and join yourself to riotous living, it's fun, it's great, let's go with it. Meaning you're walking in the ways of the world you're walking according to the rudiments of the world, you follow the world's principles of how you should be, how you should live, how you should do relationships, how you should date, how you get wealth. When you're following those things and you're living riotous, okay, you are taking chances and risk and you're you're doing whatever. Honey, you can be living riotous and you're not you're not being loud and rowdy and carousing, but inside of your heart, you're denying the Lord. And so what happens, my brothers and sisters, is when that happens, when you're in this faraway country and you're around this riotous group, you're walking in the ways of the world and carnality, you're going to find that you're going to get desperate. The son whose father was wealthy, he is, he is not too proud and he's not too, whatever the word will be, prideful to go and eat the slop of the pigs. And so you'll find yourself in those situations or have been in those situations where because you're in a famine, spiritually, you will put up with anything. You'll find yourself doing things and saying things and dealing with things and being partaker in things you never thought you would do. Some people said they'll never do drugs. There's people who said they'll never drink. There's people who said they'll never sleep with someone else's husband. There's someone that said, I'll never sleep with somebody else's wife. There's a somebody, a man who said, I'll never sleep with another man. A woman that said, I'll never sleep with another woman. Another person that said, I'll never do, uh, I'll never do, uh, a uh, threesome, foursome. There's some people that say, I'll never steal. I'll never rob a bank. I'd never kill a person. I never hurt a child. I'll never do this. I'll never do that. I'll never stay in a relationship where I'm not being respected. I'll never be with a man that beats me. I'll never be with a woman who cheats on me and is violent. People say that, but you'll find that they will be in just that exact type of relationship. And the devil always when you say there's something you will never do, he will make sure you do it. When you come over into that faraway place with him and you separate yourself from God and you're no longer listening to the voice of God, he's going to make sure you do that. Oh, you say you never sleep with two and three men at one time. You never let anyone, you know, disrespect you and beat you. Okay. When you're far away, you'll find yourself willing to deal with anything. How many of you have been in those situations? When you're in a place, you look around, you look up, and you look at your age and your time, you're like, how did I get here? Certain things people have done, they ended up behind bars. Some people say they'll never do it, but you ended up being in the same place, the people that you're around, the people that you're running with, because you were with them at the moment they did this thing, it changed your life. I was just looking at something from the 700 Club. This young man, he's young. He was 17 years old and he's just riding around in a car with his friends. When one of his friends points the gun out the window and just shoots. He's thinking the guy just shot in the air. But guess what? Somebody died. And because he was in the vehicle, he also got time. But guess what? He got more time. So the guy that actually confessed and said, it was me, I acted independently, and I shot, he was charged with second degree murder. Even though the guy, so the guy, he, he's thinking, okay, all is good, this guy admitted it, everything is okay, I should be released. No, he got more time. He was charged with first degree murder and was charged with, and was sentenced to 88 years in prison. He did not shoot. He did not do anything. The other guy confessed and through many, many channels, he continued to write and say, I did not do, this guy had nothing to do with it. But guess what? This other guy that was simply there, 
He was in prison. He got charged first degree and he never touched the weapon. He didn't know what was going on. Despite the fact that the other guy said it was all me. He got 88 years. And finally, he did get out. But it wasn't until 16 years later. 16 years later. Now, praise God, he had a great testimony. The Lord restored all that was lost. But the point I'm trying to make with you in that example is that sometimes you may say there are certain things you will never do, but you hang around people that will do it. You say, I will never kill anybody, but you hang around people that's always riding around and doing different things and living a type of life where you can end up being in a place where something goes down. You're just going over to the house. You just hang out and they invite somebody over, take them into the next room, kill the person, but you were there. Now your life is all changed. You could be in a relationship with somebody. You're fornicating with that man. You think he is single because he told you he is single, but guess what? Turns out he's married. And so now you find yourself in this big scandal and you're saying, I didn't know but guess what you partook in a sin that God says we should not be doing so how many of you are currently living this life where you look around and you see yourself where you are so desperate you'll do anything you find yourself having done anything you find yourself sleeping with somebody to get money you find yourself hustling and trying to get money out of women you find yourself stealing from your work you have high clearances in, in your job and you find yourself doing things and trying to get information to sell for money how many of you are doing these things things that you said you'd never do because there's a want there's a need i need money and so now you're willing to do anything. When you are far away from God, when you are out of his will, when you've gone to a far away land, when you've wasted your gift and your talents and your abilities and, and, and use it for yourself and for your own self elevation and to just gratify your flesh and to just be a part of the group and the team and the world and the fun things of the world because things are fun in the world. You're going to find that when that famine comes, you become very desperate. And so you'll be doing the unthinkable. But when you hear God calling to you, I will encourage you to answer. Because the longer you wait, the longer you take, the further in you're going to get. And the more you're going to find yourself doing. When it's in your heart, don't allow yourself to say, you know what, I've done too much. I'm no longer worthy to be his son. People are not even thinking, I'll go back to God in any capacity. You think, I'm too dirty. I've done too much. But I want you to know that the Lord sees you afar off even now. His robe, his ring, he has a robe, he has a ring, he has shoes waiting for you. If you will come back, let the angels of the Lord guard, guide you back home to the Lord. And allow yourself to be forgiven. Forgiveness is available to you right now. Turn to him. Turn away from your wicked ways and allow the Lord, allow the Lord to embrace you and to bring you to where you need to be. The, 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 the father says, told his servants, go and get the fatted calf and, and we're going to celebrate that he is back. My son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. That is exactly how the Lord sees us. He saw that you were dead, but he can't make you choose him. But when you turn and you come back, he will begin to give you beauty for ashes. He will take off the grave clothes and put on good clothes. I do not believe that that young man walked home naked, but he was in, he was in old clothes, tattered, torn, probably had some shoes on that was just, it, it was run down. And I'm here to tell you, that's what God wants. He will take off those things, all the damage the world has done, all the nicks and the tears and the dents. He wants to remove all those things from you and make you whole. You're always his son. You'll always be his daughter, but you have to come back. It does not, it, it, I believe it truly breaks the Lord's heart. 
when someone who had promised, someone who the Lord wanted to give them a different way, they choose to go into darkness and they never come back. I do not believe the Lord takes any sort of pleasure in saying depart from me or watching and seeing people who strayed away from him, died in their sins that are in eternal torment. This is not his desire. Do not let the devil tell you that you are too far gone and there can be no chance for you. He has no chance. So he speaks to you from his experience, his pessimistic, his, his pessimistic and dark end. He wants to put that on you so you can suffer with him in the end. I'm encouraging you to come back to the Lord. And those of you, we know, those of us, we've been there, left the Lord, went to do our own things, or we were just living our life however we want to live it, even, you know, even before salvation, how it was. It was fun. It was cool. It was great. But there was always a void. There was always a moment of emptiness. There are moments that we may have found ourselves doing the unthinkable, acting the unthinkable, participating in things we said we would never partake in, hurting people, doing people wrong, taking things that does not belong to us, in, in inciting things that can get other people hurt. You can plug in and think of anything. But the Lord called us to him. He called us out of darkness. He called us out of the dead and brought us back to life. We were lost, but he brought us back on the path. And I want to tell you that even though it does get difficult and things can get complex, sometimes you want to give up. Sometimes you want to let go. Sometimes you want to give in. But I would adjure you to remember where you came from. Remember why you came to the Lord in the first place. Don't let the devil start to put it in your mind how much easier it was. Absolutely, it was easier. Oh, yes, it was a lot of fun. Oh, yes, it was more laid back. You didn't have to have all these disciplines other than to get up, go to work, do your thing, show up to the party or not show up. Oh, he will tell you that. But remember why you left. And more than anything, do not forget the goodness of the Lord. You may be in a moment right now that you're wondering and saying, God, where are you? Things feel very complicated. But the Lord wants you to remember that he has been faithful. Remember when he saved your life. Remember when he spoke deep within your spirit, when you were in a place you were going to lose your mind. Remember the grace he gave you in the courtroom. Remember how he saved your life. Remember how he gave you that miracle. Remember how he kept you from dying. Remember how he saved you from the person that was trying to kill you. And I'm here to tell you, there's so many other things, unknown grace and mercy and things that God has done that we will never know because he prevented it and kept you from ever having to face it. When you're away from God, when you're far away from him, you're going to find yourself doing things you never thought you'd ever do. Turn to the Lord. Turn to the Lord. Do not stay in this faraway country. And when you are with your father, don't think and look at how good and how well you're flourishing. Never think to take what he's given you to take it into the world, to squander it, to use it. This is a better way. I can, I can come up more in the world. There's so many peoples in my spirit that have compromised. You have taken your gifts and your talents and the things that God has given you, the platforms that he has given you, and you're taking it and you're using it for yourself. You're using it for yourself. And there's so many people, it's funny, they, they would never have left the father's house. They're right there in the father's house. They're right there in the church, right there in the ministry, still saying that they're Christians, taking the things that God has given them, the gifts, the talents, using it right there in the church on their platforms, but it's only for themselves. The Lord is calling you back to him because a famine will surely come. But the enemy, especially those of us when we're on platforms like YouTube and other platforms, he will bring you to open shame. If you begin to dishonor God, if you begin to do things by yourself, oh, you were talking about the Lord on TV. You were talking about the Lord on and in a, on a national platform, you were talking about the Lord on this channel. Well, this is the same platform I was you I will use to tear you down and to bring shame. This is what Satan will do if you continue to be disobedient to that check, be disobedient to the voice of God telling you to come back to him, showing you, hey, you're getting prideful. Hey, you're beginning to get out of line. You are no longer online. If you don't listen to those things that God tells you in private, I'm here to tell you that platform that you're using to elevate yourself, to build up yourself, will be the same platform in which you'll be taken down and brought to nothing. 
Guys, I just encourage you to turn to the Lord. Turn to him. When you go away from the Lord, when you go away from him and you're separated from him, the more desperate you will become.